Ms. Wilhelmi, dear colleagues and dear Witzmann Ritterich, I'm always happy to come back. And it's the third time that I'm here. We've visited many different conferences. We discussed, we discussed obesity and we didn't have testing in animals. The cell tests for longevity are really impressive, those animal tests. And it was a great presentation and a great overview that you just presented and I had never heard it before. Ms. Behaus in Heidelberg has also looked at longevity thanks to calorie restriction and she looked at that quite intensively. We also look at longevity by calorie rejection. And in Ulm, the cradle of curiosity, Professor Ditschneid was the zero diet um, expert in Ulm, it was started under Professor Pfeiffer and Professor Dischneid. They noticed that after war, people gained weight again in 1960, more or less. Before, overweight was no problem. And then Professor Dischneid started to look at this from a scientific perspective. And he did major studies in Ulm at the university. And those studies then led to very different conclusions, which we discussed quite often. Often, and we did not agree on the number of days that people were allowed to fast, fast or whether it should be substituted fasting, and then different fasting methods came up with them, substitution, protein substitution, then there was the Oberstaufener whey diet and the Oberstaufen Schroth diet. They were all restricted in calories, always in protein, um, very little fat and high in carbs. We started with amino acid infusions. We did not do animal testing. We immediately started to work with people, study people, and we ran many different studies. Our boss told us back then, okay, just do it, do something. And we found that, yes, with obese patients that had a BMI of 40, 50, or even 60, that there were many complications. We had cardiac arrhythmias, um, people died of a heart attack, and our cardiologist went crazy. He said, okay, what could be the reason? There was not enough protein present, so we substituted protein, and this is how the protein-substituted modified fasting came into being. We organized the Ulm Adipositas Symposium, and Ms. Wilhelmi was um, involved from the very beginning because she offered a very interesting concept. We then also had the German um, Association for uh, Obesity that was founded in 1985, and Professor Ditchen Knight was the first president of the association. This is and he had the objective of making this more scientific, the study of obesity. He was the first president and Professor Gries. He cannot be with us today. He's 93 years old, but he's still very fit. We meet each other regularly. He was the diabetologist, and he had the idea of founding this um, association, so he was there right from the beginning. He said, let's do this research association, start this research association on obesity. And they looked at the clinical um, image of obesity. Professor, that was Professor Grace, and he's also doing well. In 1993, we organized the fifth Congress on Obesity in Ulm. It was a lot of work, but it was also great. The Ger European Ob Association of Obesity then grew later on, and they looked at it from the scientific perspective. And back then, we already talked about the protein substituted modified fasting in um, obesity patients. We published our findings and Ms. Wilhelmi was also very actively involved in this and she showed us that in the Buchinger Clinic she offered a great program to deal with the metabolic syndrome, risk factors and overweight. 
and she had the idea of starting an interdisciplinary modal therapy. We thought that that was really a great idea because we thought we were about to establish guidelines and those guidelines should consider the concept multimodal, not a doctor is doing the treatment or simply a physiotherapist or a psychologist alone. No, we wanted a team to do all of this and that has been implemented and I was also asked to present team concepts today so that fits quite well. In Ulm we did many studies and the studies have shown things that we didn't like so much. The zero diet, total fasting, and a patient here, you can see he lost weight. Of course, you lose a lot of weight with that kind of diet, but then with a ketoacidosis, he stopped drinking, and then the uric acid, the uric acid um, dropped, and he needed dialysis. The, with the second patient, it happened as well. He can see the increase of creatinine to a hundred of or a thousand. Even these are dramatic values. Also, uric acid, so the kidney failed. So these were huge complications that we found in human beings. So the QT, then we had the QT extension and some other things, and we said, okay. So we need to look at the basis and we also looked at the nitrogen balance during four week fasting and we found that the nitrogen excretion was increased and then it decreased to about five gra down to five grams and it didn't drop further than that. So looking at the balance, you can calculate why the protein level the household in human beings is then depleted. The problem with these studies was that the subjects burn functional protein first, not muscular protein. All obese people have that because they weigh 200 kilos, but what they burn is the functional protein of the kidney and the heart muscle, of course, and this, of course, is very tricky when it comes to survival. It's a huge risk. So we tried to balance this um, nitrogen balance and we substituted it with protein. Here we added, we gave 33 grams of protein per day and you can see the nitrogen de excretion and then you see it with the 33 grams of protein and it's identical and you can calculate how much protein this patient lost and when he will reach the end of his life of course in our clinic of course we could not do this it was way too risky so we studied the results from the IRA um, in prison, uh, prisoners from Ireland in detail, they went on a hunger strike and they all died after 40 to 60 days. Young women with a liquid protein diet, there was a bad diet in the States that was of low value and they started at, as obese people and they stopped eating and we had people die after two or three weeks. So we also measured the nitrogen balance and the low protein um, addition and we only substituted again 33 grams of protein over four weeks of time and here you can see the negative balance and if you do the math then you can see after 20 days we have a balanced nitrogen balance with these patients. So we can say that they're not burning functional protein anymore but they are in a balance again. This was what we wanted to achieve. We reached this with a low dosage and we discussed this very often with Ms. Wilhelmi how much protein is included in vegetable protein or plant protein because of course we wanted to reach those values safely with our patients. We also did it for longer periods for 100 days for example. Here we did it for 56 days and you can see that the patient had 33 grams of protein, 25 grams of carbohydrates and one gram of fat. That amounts to 300 calories more or less. And for the first two weeks, he was negative in the balance again. So it wasn't balanced again because energies are being saved. And the mechanisms that Mr. Mitchell described have not started at that point. Only at a very late point will the human being start with lipolysis. That means they burn the fat that they have as reserve fat mass. But the evolution tells them keep the fat. Maybe the situation is going to be worse. So lipolysis only starts after three to four days. And only then will they burn that fat. Other, first of that, they will burn glycogen. And with 300 calories, 
Over six weeks, you have a balanced nitrogen balance. If you substitute that with vitamins, mineral elements, and so on and so forth, then you can continue this treatment forever, in theory. We did that. And I thought if people go to Mars, we will also be able to do this. Here you can see the uh, nitrogen excretion again with a different kind of treatment. We discussed different forms of treatment and studied different forms of treatment. This was the thrush um, regime. We did work with Ms. Brosik, Mr. Brosik, and it shows that this is a low-calorie diet. You know it. It's got 7 grams of protein, 120, 100 grams of carbohydrates, and hardly any fat fat, but every third day patients get a bottle of wine. So of course um, this has a huge effect. It was a compliance problem with us in the clinic, so we had to reduce that. Mr. Kreisky was the uh, patient of Ms. Prosik at the time, and he was happy to do it. Former Austrian Chancellor. So the Schroth core has a negative nitrogen level or balance, and we said oh, you can give 50 grams of um, cream cheese. That's not that helps you improve your compliance result, and it's not going to be damaging. Obese patients with a low calorie. Intake were also examined during the froth um, regimen. They were negative. The balance stayed negative. And if you compare the t overview and the total studies of the nitrogen balance in grams per kilogram, this is what you can see here: weight gram per loss of kilogram in total weight. Uh, compared to total fasting. With total fasting, you have a high loss of nitrogen. That is, there is no doubt about that. We were able to prove that. We then looked at the Schroth core regimen and we found that 701 gram, there was a substitution and we lost less nitrogen. If you do modified fasting, there was a, many studies, protein substitute modified um, protein substitute modified fasting. Then we found that the nitrogen loss per kilogram weight loss was reduced to less than five grams. And this means that we did not have an overall loss issue anymore. If you analyze the body loss, the body weight loss, and look at the different forms of diet over four weeks, then you can see total fasting here. That's the one to the left. You have a water loss in all of these diets. It's the same. This bound water, it's the water you lose. It's glycogen-bound water. This is simply what you lose. You cannot avoid that. And that's always about 20%. If you do total fasting, then 37% of protein is lost because your body is using that protein. If you give them the, your body some protein, then the loss will be less. If you do the whey regimen, that's one kilogram of whey, and we studied that also with 50 grams of protein. If you substitute 50 grams of protein, then you only have a loss of 11% of protein. And with modified fasting, we reduced it to 4%. We were able to reduce it to 4%. So that is quite good. And in terms of the fat reduction, we reached 75%. We completed that in Ulm. And we said, now we want to run an analysis of what we have to do to prevent negative impacts. So that means we have to substitute it with something to um, balance the negative, um, the negative electrolyte balance. And in order to substitute for that, we give enough um, potassium and enough uh, natrium. And this leads to less um, cardiac arrhythmias. We have le we also see less ketoacidosis. You cannot prevent it completely. When every fat is burned, you have ketoacidosis to some extent. But you can prevent it by giving lots of liquid and by also giving carbohydrates. Protein as much as you need um, in order to balance, compensate for the negative N balance. 
that's 30 to 50. The, according to the European guideline, they talk about 80 grams for obese people. We think that that's too much. You don't need that. From a medical perspective, we could do less. We substitute the protein loss, and therefore we prevent the problems that we have seen very often, such as cardiac arrhythmias. You should also balance for negative um, trace element by, by balances because if you do this overnight, then the um, body will not handle this um, loss of trace elements quickly. This was the development of formula diets with protein. We did t total fasting for 10 years, and then we said, okay, we add some protein. Um, so we started a working group. Then Graham, Macklin, and Bird, Baird started in the States and in the UK. And there, there were also some surgeons that started working with liquid protein diets. And then in Germany, we started a development to make sure that it was uh, um, evolved or into a program. OptiFast was then developed. It's optimized fasting with the substitution. We worked together with Mr. Poodle to work on the psychology. Um, we now have the OptiFast 52 program, and Dr. Hagen and Dr. Wenzel were the ecotrophologists who were involved in the development of this program. In the development phase, we went through five companies, Amanda, Sandos, Novartis, and Nestle. They um, don't know how they should continue. They had some problems, but um, we think it worked quite well. The development was worked quite well. First, there was the modified fasting and the modified um, zero diet, zero calorie diet, as it was called back then, because it was monitored by scientists. So we know all of the advantages. You know of the advantages. You are fully in your um, protein balance. You have the essential fatty acids that you need, 10 grams of fatty acids that you cannot uh, substitute and that we don't have saved in our body. You need carbohydrates. Um, electrolytes are good as well as trace elements and vitamins. They are also substituted. If you do that, you have fat loss and weight loss. You don't feel hunger. That's the opposite to fasting. You don't feel hunger because it's just a change in the ketogenic balance and there's high compliance. If you want to torture your patient, then you just give him a thousand calories. They feel hungry for four weeks and they stop the diet. So fasting is great. We have a high compliance and given the high weight loss, um, this increases the motivation of patients. Formula diets do not have any disadvantages. If you avoid um, mistakes in treatment, there is no um, mortality, increased mortality. Then we went back to Ms. Wilhelmi and her approach and we started an interdisciplinary therapy with obese people or for obesity. We said patients need a doctor in order to assess the risk. They need to move and exercise. They need nutrition and they need a psychologist. This worked quite well. We also found room where to do this, defined the rooms. We had a training room. We also developed the training programs. Our objective was to help obese people, extremely obese people, and that number of people increases. We have 30% of obese people in Germany, and that is quite a high percentage, and 50% of people are overweight. So overall, we need care and treatment of these people. So we did this via the OptiFast. We started 50 centers in Germany. We founded 50 centers who all follow the same program. The formula diets were not understood by most people. You have the doctor, you have the nutrition, you have the behavior and exercise. That was all important. And this program is a long-term program with a fasting phase of 12 weeks, then a transition phase of six weeks, and in total it lasts one year. They do it in groups because the individual therapy could not be financed from our perspective. This is the principle. They have different, there's different formulas with protein, with, um, of course, with fibers. Mr. Poodle introduced the points. We, instead of the calories, we discussed this for very long because we disagree here. He opted for the points because he think points are easily understood by people. But now the whole world opted for calories, so we might have to change that again. So we tried to also describe this in our guidelines. And the German Obesity Association wrote this guideline and 
Then they approved of the formula diets, which were not very popular for a very long time and not accepted for a long time. By now, they have been well accepted, and the association found, the DGEM found that formula, the formula diet with a weight reduction program is actually the best diet that you could opt for. Unilateral diet options are not recommended, and the DAG, the German Anti-Obesity Association, said that fasting is not suitable for fasting. Everyone can fast. I think everyone can fast without suffering from any damage. But if you have obese patients who have to lose weight under the supervision of a doctor, and then, of course, there is the responsibility the doctor bears. And if there is damage to the patient, then in the end, you will be held accountable as the doctor. And this is what makes it so difficult. And for that reason, it's easier to fall back onto that guideline and say, I'm careful when it comes to fasting and obese people. We are not talking about eight or 10 days of fasting, but we are talking about three months of fasting with a um, weight reduction or calorie reduction. Oh, no, calorie reduction from 140. 40 to 108 and from 111 to 89 in women. So the red line is women and the green is for men. These are good values. Here with this and with these patients, of course, the life quality is increased. And we all know this. If we lose weight, we feel better, no matter whether it's with a surgery or if they lose weight in another way. They always feel better after they've lost weight. And the life quality has been improved. Psychology did not improve. Even though they all weighed 40 kilos less, we didn't understand why. But by now we, by now we know why. A thin, obese person is not a happy, obese person. And this is what we need to take into account. And the suicide rate is still high. And it takes up for psychologists to adapt what they know. Of course, we have also been able to, or we discussed the long-term long -term success, and we looked WHO criteria. And we have a long-term success of 60%. Diabetes and hypertonia amount to 20, 25%. So the activities, the measures seem to be good. In the States, OptiVin is now being used. And we have published our um, findings in the England Journal of Medicine. We have 1,500. We found 1,500 patients who participated in a prospective study and who significantly lost weight. But we also had dropouts. The uh, Americans to the OptiVin study now, that's the OptiFast study in the States, more or less. The results, as you all know, are always like this. If you lose weight, then cholesterol levels drop um, and HDL and LDL levels improve, triglycerides improve, the blood pressure decreases, the glucose um, decreases, and also uric acid level drop. So you lose 30 kilograms for most people, that is sufficient, but not for our patients. Our patients have a body mass index of 60. And they weigh so much more, so we said the three months are not going to be sufficient. Let's do five. Let's do five months of fasting and fasting therapy. Many colleagues say no one can do this for three months, not eating for three months or not eating for four weeks. Of course people can do that because then they don't have to make a decision anymore. If they do a diet, then they have to make a hundred decisions a day. Can I still eat this or not? Will I eat it or not? And if they make two wrong decisions, then all of the controlling mechanisms will break down and then they are not losing weight and then they drop out. So we said we need more weight loss the more the better and we therefore started a pilot study with a second fasting phase with a with the balanced formula diet with 10 subjects in a, and we monitored them during the entire second phase so here the BMI was at around 50 with one fasting phase. And so men went, weighed around 160 on average, and women weighed um, 136 average on average. 
And if you look at the profile of the patients, this is the women. And if you see the weight loss, then women lose 24 kilograms, or almost 25 during one fasting phase. And if they fast twice, so for five months, they lose almost 40 kilograms. Here you see the men during the one fasting phase, they lose 28. And with two fasting phases, so for five months, a hypocaloric diet, they lose 65 kilograms. These are average values, um, and that is quite some success, and it's relevant from a clinical perspective. So it is good that we did this study, and it helped us to show compliance is good. We have achieved results um, that can be compared to bariatric surgical um, measures. Very often the old SOS study is cited, but of course this cannot be compared. But you can see if you don't do anything, then people gain weight. There's no doubt about that. If you do something, if you exercise, you lose weight. If you do surgery, you um, lose weight. The sleeve is not included here yet. The gastric bypass is the most efficient one, but the Optifast two phases, this is, brings us down here with the gastric bypass. They all gain weight afterwards. Those with the sleeve gain most weight afterwards. You may know this because our stomach adapts again. If you take out half of it, it will grow back and people are capable of eating just as much as they ate before. This study is not a proper study because only we have only 10% of the patients that the study started with. And of course, from a scientific point of view, that's not correct. But we said we take the three best out of our 10 patients and we'll follow them up and take out the worst patients. No, you can't do this. It's a bad study. The SOS is a bad study, and surgeons don't quote it as much anymore. Men are so good with the bypass. If you have a well-led therapy that's done with an interdisciplinary approach and has a stringent approach, um, you can be just as successful as with the surgical approach, and you can have significant success. You won't be able to read this, so I'm going to drop this. These are the recommendations by the DAG in the guideline, what kind of study, what kind of therapy program should be recommended. Here you can see an overview of the weight reduction programs in Ulm. We started with the group therapy. There was a logical consequence of how we started in Ulm. And without formula diets, they cannot be successful. That's what we found. AUKA, the health insurance, two kilograms. Weight Watchers, five kilograms. Mobilis, they just went bankrupt, five kilograms. We developed our own program, Doc Weight, eight kilograms with a calorie restriction. Body Weight works with a formula diet, 8.9 kilograms. In the multi-center study, we had a weight loss of 17 kilograms on average. Here, 24, and with a two-phase fasting, so much more, 44. So formula diets have been successful. In 2001, we published long-term results. Well, long-term results were studied. Low-calorie diet, the results of weight loss, not so great. They didn't lose that much weight. There was the one in yellow. If you have VLCD, very low calorie diet, then you have the best long-term success. And after five years, you will still see success stories. And this is why we started the Doc Weight program. You may have heard about it already. It was developed together with Ms. Schilling Wassmann. She was also she was also there, and it was developed with a multimodal um, therapy approach. And this multimode approach led to a loss of 8 kilograms. We said, this is still not enough. We need more. So we add a formula diet in order to double the weight loss to improve com and to improve compliance. So we founded our own practices. Um, we have a focal practice for nutritional medicine. We have 100 by now. And they can also do fasting therapy if they go there, because they can choose the therapy. The doctor bears the risk, and they will monitor everything. So we are currently establishing these new structures. We are discussing it with the insurance companies, whether they will pay for part of these programs to make sure they the epidemia obesity in Germany is dealt with. Um, it's, we are cognitive beings, so you can also approach it from the cognitive
innovative point of view, and specialists and doctors have to be able to reach our patients, and we have to tell them that they can live uh, as vegetarians or flexitarians, whatever they like, but they should keep their risks in mind, because this will otherwise really raise the costs for the community. Personally speaking, I think formula diets are indispensable. Short and long-term successes are good if you have an interdisciplinary multimodal approach. The results of a weight reduction program with a second fasting phase have great successes. Um, the financing is still not clear. In Germany, we need a clearer financing structure. Someone needs to finance this. Then, of course, we have to have to do the follow-up. And I still think that interdisciplinary, multimodal, long-term therapy programs with formula diets are the gold standard of obesity therapies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention.